So since so many artists are asking me, brand man, is TikTok really worth it? I really don't understand this thing. I decided to go ahead and do a free training using real campaigns and I'm gonna go through some real results, but also explaining it in a way that if you get TikTok in this way, it will be a game changer for you with your music. I promise, not only that, no matter what type of music you have and no matter what age and you'll see why. So let's start here. Views, 734,900 views on this particular campaign, 27,899 likes, 2,661 shares, and 87 videos have been generated from this campaign. Now, let's look into the finer details though because this is where it becomes more important. For those views, them views came out at 0.00115 cents per view. That's a fraction of a penny. 20, uh, well, the same thing for the likes. Shares were 31 cents per share and videos came in at $9.77 per video. Now, you might not have ran a TikTok campaign, so I wanna ask you in general, do you feel like these are good results for anything? They're not the worst results in the world, I'll tell you that, but they are the worst results that I've ever gotten on TikTok. This was a situation where the artist had some business issues in the back end where the campaign didn't even come to fruition like it was supposed to. It had to halt mid campaign, but we still got these results and I'm gonna go through the rest of the results before I talk about some more aspects of TikTok. So check this out right here. That same campaign just marketed on TikTok got some streams. It got about 1,700 streams, and those streams came out at 49 cents per stream. Industry average, if you have a really good play um, list broker, you're probably gonna see around two to four cents per stream. This was at 49 cents, but remember, this is overtime. We just marketed on TikTok, and it bled over to here. Same thing for YouTube, about, about 1,800 views on the YouTube video, 47 cents per view. You can get lower, you can get better than that on YouTube. If you are dangerous enough, you learn it well enough, it's easy to get one to five cents per view. On YouTube, of course, you, you got you know fractions of a penny views that you can get on YouTube as well if you really know what you're doing, but let's stick, stick with the average of what most people are gonna get, one to five cents, right? 47 cents per view, higher than that. That's what this campaign got, but again, this is overtime, this is extra. Now, with that being said, a campaign that's currently running right now, 0.21 cents, well, 2.1 cents per view is what it's getting per stream on Spotify. That's right in the pocket of an industry average. And this is about 50,000 views that this campaign has gotten, probably, you know, it's, it's still going, it's still going. Um, I, I just talked about it, talked to the people earlier today. So that's still going. Remember, this one only got 1,700 streams. This one at 0 0.0211, a fraction of a penny is at 50,000 streams and still going on Spotify just from being marketed on TikTok. Now, if we look at the YouTube results, it's about 15,000 views in on the YouTube video that came from TikTok. Now the average, well, get, remember we said one to five cents, if you're pretty solid, the average for that particular campaign is about, that's a zero five seven, you probably can't even see that. So it's about 5.7 cents, right? per view on that campaign. So it's on the top end if you are running, but remember, this isn't an ad on YouTube. This is coming over from TikTok. Lo and behold, it's about 10 million views on TikTok right now. Thousands of videos being created to it. So you're talking about from what this artist has done, the first campaign, by the way, when we talk about um, it being the worst campaign, it hasn't. It's not even a thousand dollars spent on that campaign. It's it's not that much much money has, that's been spent, and it got the results it did. This is somewhere a little around that, but it's some very good results. So 
maybe double the money, but you have far more results because we were able to keep running it and run with the strategy that we planned for. And this is what I love about TikTok. You run in one place and get all of these results that get pushed in all these other areas, right? Where traditionally you might run something on Instagram and it stays on Instagram, or it might be a programmatic ad where you're running it on Instagram and you're pushing to Spotify. So you see the results there, or you're running on YouTube and you push it there, or it's just one platform that's really seeing prime results a lot of times in a lot of people's campaigns. But this is one campaign that's having people go to all other aspects because of something on TikTok that I like to call transferability. That has to be kept in mind whenever we consider any type of campaign. People will discover you on TikTok and they will happily go find your music because up until now, there hadn't even been a direct link to select on TikTok. For a long time, people hadn't even been able to put a link in their bio when it comes to TikTok so people could go directly to the music. So this isn't people even saying, hey, go check out the link in my bio with the call to action. This is people literally hearing a song and then going to find it, Google searching it, YouTube searching it. So 50,000 streams based on that behavior, not go, I'm pushing you over here. This is, oh, I hear it. Whoa, what's that song? And that's what we're seeing again and again and again on TikTok. If you look at Instagram, we already know those prices have gone up. You're not gonna pay $100 per 10,000 followers for an influencer because we know it's not worth that anymore, right? $100 per 10,000 followers means you're paying $1,000 to someone who has 100,000 followers and stop and think and tell me if you think that's worth it on TikTok, I mean on Instagram today. I don't think it is. As a matter of fact, I know for a fact many of the influencers know that it's not. They're trying to hold on as much as they can, but so many of them have come down since I've been working with them because they already know and understand that there's more competition in these other spaces. They're trying to maintain if they can, but a lot of them have come down because they know it's not worth it. Instagram is suppressing traffic. So to really understand though, here's something to consider. When we look at TikTok, right? This is how the content flows through TikTok. There's four buckets that you can look at content always starts in bucket number one it's shown to a small audience it gets stress test for a period of time and i can go deeper into the algorithm in another video but just understand that it's here for about two hours and it starts to move throughout the platform and it stops on level three for about two four days actually you'll understand that when you start to get into tiktok and see how the content flows as well but if you even make it there once you make it to each level it's shown to more and more people. So these levels also coordinate with the size of the box. You're being shown to a small bucket, let's say maybe 2,000 people, and then you're being shown to maybe 20,000 people, then you're being shown to 200,000 people, then you're being shown to 2 million people and beyond, right? That's how the flow of the content works. But outside of the transferability, which is one of the most important facets of TikTok when it comes to an artist, people looking for your music, they're hearing your music and then they're actively going to look for it because this platform works like promo daily Every single video is promo, except people are giving you permission to show it to them. That's a marketer's dream. The other thing is viral loops. So because of how this works, the way the platform is built, if you drop a video, right, then it'll go through these levels. And your video might make it to level two. Somebody sees that video and they decide, hmm, I'm gonna create a video. And this person could be better at you than creating videos. And matter of fact, they might actually have a lot more followers and be a strong content creator, so they might do it, and then it'll take it to level three. Multiple people see their video, and then they might do it, let's say five people see their video, and one person stops on level two, two people stop on level three, and then four of, four of them make it, no, oh, that's the wrong math, two people <laughs> make it to level four, right? So now you have people being, planted at seas on different levels, all coming from one video, right? So you drop a video, that video creates other videos, and then th that video inspires other people to make videos, and next thing you know, you're entering into this viral 
loop, right? So now it's marketing for itself. In the same way we think about passive income and people say, I want my money to work for myself. On TikTok, your content is working for itself. It's a little soldier that gets other pieces of and creators and content out there to create for it. And then when they create, that brings back more content that gets created and it continues this loop. While your video is working for you, you can continue to make strategic moves to boost that content as well. So that's one of the biggest beauties. We have the transferability of content on TikTok and then also the viral loops being built in. And just to actually drive that point through, let me pull this up right here. So that first campaign, the worst campaign that I talked about, 87 videos generated, we only created four videos for this campaign. So 83 of those videos all came because of that viral loop concept that's ingrained into TikTok. There were other people who saw those videos and said, I want to create videos off of it, which allowed our cost per video to come down to $9.77. As a matter of fact, remember, I mentioned this is that worst campaign that I've ever had run on TikTok. That artist was actually extremely delighted from the results and what, based on what they had to pay from any results they saw somewhere else and they wanted to do more and more work hopefully after they finish figuring out all the back end business troubles that are going on right now. We, because we know what it could have been and it could have gotten closer to those other campaigns that we run, we were, were kind of sad about it. We were highly disappointed, especially with that song. And another thing about that particular song, it had zero bass in it, zero. So the type of music that you think blows up on TikTok, it's not just high end, energetic hip hop. It's not just super poppy songs. That song, I don't even know what to call it, honestly. It's, it's pretty slow. It's not even an R&B song. It's some kind of mid alternative, modern, whatever you want to call it, right? But it's, it's, it's an interesting type of sound and it still is taking off in its own with those little pushes that we put behind it. EDM, I see that blow up on TikTok all the time. Country, plenty of traction on TikTok. It doesn't matter your type of genre and it doesn't really matter your age because it's about the music itself if you run and understand how to push the campaigns in the proper way, right? People are hearing the music and going to find the music before they even think about who they see in it, like who the actual artist is. That's after the fact. As a matter of fact, eh, there's, there's some, I've seen some instances where people have been highly surprised to find out who the artist is, how they actually look and all that after they hear the music and become fans of the music itself. But that's what you want, right? You want followers based off the merit of your music first. That's what so many artists are looking for. TikTok affords that in a way that a lot of these other platforms aren't necessarily affording, right? It's, it's more Spotify in many ways than it is Instagram because people are truly discovering music on TikTok that's another conversation for another day, but just understand that this should be enough to give you an idea that you don't have an excuse on age, you don't have an excuse on your type of music because all of that stuff is there, right? Gary Vee is talking about it a lot because it's a very real thing. You hear a lot of people talking about it because it's a very real thing for music results. And so much of the industry, I'm in meetings all the time, these people are coming, right? These people are coming and the prices are going to triple at minimum of a, for a lot of these influencers and a lot of these other types of campaigns that you might be looking to run on TikTok because they're gonna bring the money. You need to make sure that you get in before the prices rise, particularly if budget is a constraint for you. So if you wanna make sure you understand TikTok and you wanna get onboarded as quickly as possible on how you specifically can benefit as an artist, because there's a lot of content and ideas for just creatives in general, but how you can benefit for music then check out our free training. It's at tiktokmusicpromo.com and you will reap a lot of benefits from not having to go through figuring out TikTok. It's a completely different platform. So get on there, utilize the information and put it to work because TikTok is a game changer and I've yet to see a social media platform that impacts an artist's music directly like this. Get on while it's sweet because it won't always be this easy 
tiktokmusicpromo.com. We have an entire free training. And for those of you who want to share this video with your friends, you can check it out on the Brand Man page. I'll make sure it gets posted on the Brand Man page on YouTube. That's it.